Now, the Panasonic GX5 Mark II and GX6 have been announced. What should we expect from our beloved Olympus? But before I continue, this video is purely for fun and speculation. So everything I say is personal and does not represent OMDS in any official way. So let's get right to it. Like a few videos that I've published recently, I'm getting more and more excited about Micro Four Thirds. Partly because we have virtually no mind-blowing developments for the past couple of years, while Full Frame took all the limelights. But I also said many times that we shouldn't get too worried about the platform, and I've been an advocate for Olympus and of course the whole Micro Four Thirds community. Even with all the quietness from both Olympus and Panasonic, and the transfer to OMDS at the beginning of this year, and the constant bashing from Tony lovers and professional photographers, I remain ultra positive and supportive. The fact is, 2021 is heating up. I have a lot of Micro Four Thirds lenses in my possession right now waiting to be tested and reviewed. We also heard the 8K Chinese Bosma video cam, and now Panasonic's heavily rumored GX6 is confirmed together with a slightly upgraded GX5 Mark II. But what makes me excited is the preview specs of GX6 that perhaps leave many of us wondering what the next flagship Olympus camera would look like. This is obvious, and I was expecting this after all the rumors floating around, and now confirmed by Panasonic's GX6. For a camera that can do 5.7K video, you will need a high resolution sensor. But unlike Bosma's 8K 33 megapixel sensor, which is shaped in 16 by 9 ratio. Although unconfirmed, I believe Panasonic will use a standard 4x3 ratio sensor as any other GX predecessors. But exact sensor resolution is unknown at this stage, since they can only oversample a high resolution sensor to generate a much higher quality footage. So, will Olympus use a similar sensor? One thing is for sure, Olympus is upping its video game, and for that to happen, the sensor has to be updated to give better output. And this will have a significant impact on steel's capability. A new sensor can give new power for photographers, I've long been saying that 20 megapixel is more than sufficient for most, and I continue to support my argument. Though, a high resolution with better and cleaner signal output will bring the system right up to date for the tech-savvy groups, and ultimately translate to better sales and keeping the companies up and recover some lost grounds. Again, even with the latest updated GX5 Mark II, it is evident that a new processor is on the way to Olympus, if it's to use a new sensor with new features. Unless, something that we don't know about our latest Trupic 9 processor that's in the EM1 Mark III, which is also powerful enough to equate two Trupic 8 processor in the EM1X. But is it enough to power all those new pixels and data? The current Trupic 9 processor is also only featured in one camera in the entire Olympus lineup, so it is hard to imagine Olympus would waste this processor and jump to another one. Unless, Unless this Trupic 9 will be downgraded for all subsequent updates for future EM5 and EM10 series, give these little cameras more horsepower for new features and upgradability. That leaves a potential conclusion that a new Trupic 10 processor for a new compact flagship, or a dual Trupic 9 setup for a new EM1X Mark II, or whatever the new flagship is called for the main engine or engines. So watch this space. But whatever Olympus decides, I'm very hopeful that it will be ultra cool. Panasonic GX5 Mark II also shed some lights on potential hardware upgrades for the next Olympus flagship. New high-res EVF and a better, brighter back LCD panel seems quite logical. With the GX6 price is expected to be around 2,500 US dollar or around 2,200 pound, there is some room for Olympus to pack some of these wanted pieces into the new body, if it's sold around the same price, and that will be quite awesome. Although, I can't see any steel spring through from Olympus' already full house setup, from the classic and super useful Livecom, Livebulb, Pro Capture to the latest AI subject tracking, Live ND, Starry Sky AF, and high res modes. I wouldn't expect anything new at this moment in time. Though, some refinements can be seen that will work in tandem with the new processor and sensor. We can see better Live ND algorithm for more natural processing similar to high-res mode that's got better with each generation, 
we may, if lucky, to see more profiles in AI subject tracking in the future too. Autofocus has been a strong point for Olympus within the Micro Four Thirds world, and even, at least to me, matching other formats in most situations. Its hybrid focus for video in particular, very useful and accurate. Yet, as much as I love Continuous AF in all latest Olympus cameras with hybrid focusing, Continuous AF Plus tracking isn't always a favorite mode with many reviewers and users. I also haven't had much luck with this particular mode either, and I always revert back to traditional Continuous AF and customize my AF group to get much better results. With the new and brilliant AI subject tracking and enhanced portrait AF like face and eye detection, is CAF Plus tracking still a useful tool? Well, only time will tell, but if there's something needs improving, this would be it. What about speed? I don't think Olympus needs to address this particular department. With EM1 Mark III and EM1X being super quick cameras already, up to 60 frames per second in silent shutter burst in high and pro capture, most photographers would be more than happy. In fact, most photographers would be happy with 15 frames per second even in fast action scenes. The only thing that may boost speed is to clear those buffers quicker by having a dual UHS-2 slot for the next EM1. Though the X series already sports this feature, so it depends on what the next flagship form factor is, we may see it going all UHS-2 spec with faster read and write speeds. As I mentioned, Olympus is definitely upping its game in the video world, as we witnessed last December by adding the ProRes RAW support for both EM1 Mark III and EM1X. But as you know, that ProRes RAW is a great option for serious filmmakers. It may just be a bit of an overkill for consumers. And the fact is, most consumers are now accustomed to having 4K60 as the bare minimum when they are researching for their next purchase. And I'm very confident that we will see this frame rate finally making its appearance in our next flagship. How about bitrate? And maybe even faster frame rate for slow motion? With the upcoming GX6 can shoot 4K 120 and up to 5.7K in 60p, both in 10-bit, the new Panasonic can really set the standards for mobile filmmaking. And even with the next OMD camera not matching these awesome specs in videos, it would be interesting to see if they can improve the overall quality of the standard 4K specs. One thing I do expect is that with a new sensor, we can see either oversample 4K, if Olympus decide not to go with 5.7K like the GX6, and if a new processor is employed, we may see better sampling, compressions, and bit rates for even better quality UHD footage. Will we also finally see unlimited recording over the current cap at 30 minutes? Will they finally got rid of that fat format structure that allows a single video file no matter how long it is, that is current little chunks of video files? Will we see a flatter OM lock for even better grading? All these remain unknown until we have some confirmation from our mothership. Whatever the next flagship OMD is, I am now even more excited with all these new developments in the Micro Four Thirds world. 2021 has set the tone for this brilliant format and confirms that we are not going away anytime soon. What's better? It looks like the future is pretty bright for all those who treasure mobility, affordability, and more importantly, fun about all else. Let me know your thoughts about the new Panasonic cameras. Is your heart pumping for the next flagship from Olympus? I certainly am. And that's it for now, you know what to do. Thumb me if you enjoyed this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things Michael Four Thirds and of course, Olympus. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs>